about advanced information, we hardly need to introduce our first road test guest this week, but we will anyway. It's the 1984 Honda Civic CRX. Now, unless you've just returned from the planet Mongo, you've probably read that this is now the highest mileage car sold in America. It's also being touted as the forerunner of tomorrow's sports cars. Well, whatever it is, it's most affordable, with a base price of $6,149. But is it really everything everybody claims? Well, let's find out. The vital statistics for the Honda CRX are in the small is beautiful department. Wheelbase is only 86.6 inches, and the whole thing is only 12 feet long. And this smallest of new cars on the American road barely tips the scales at a slight 1,800 pounds. Yet tug on the stylishly recessed door handle and pop one of its long portals and you expose an incredibly roomy interior. One thing that helps, the seats have more fore and aft adjustment than a star NBA center could ever use. Although the also generous headroom means you sit very low and to some, the seat cushions were overly hard. Since you feel like you're being enveloped by the CRX, you'll appreciate the fact that the thick rimmed steering wheel and most controls fall neatly into hand. That includes the cable linkage five-speed shifter, one of the most positive we've found on any front drive car. The driver faces a large control pod that includes clear speedo, tack, water temperature, and fuel gauges, along with the dreaded and usually useless upshift indicator. While well laid out, you can't say the same for the heat and air conditioning controls. You'll be able to see them easily once you remove the steering wheel. Other interior features on our car included a confused looking but great sounding stereo, a dash top storage nook, and another one just left of the wheel. But the real storage story is behind the seats. First, there's this very useful underfloor bin that not only takes a fair size bag, but is lockable to boot. And the rest of the huge boot is just as versatile. Even with the large glass hatch closed, I managed to move a 30 by 50 inch folding table with only a minor compromise to my seating position. On the outside of the CRX, things aren't so positive. This is not the most attractively styled vehicle around unless you're looking for a beached whale without a tail. The CRX's light weight means they've used a lot of plastic. We do applaud its use in the front fenders, but we question the colored plastic rocker panels that are applied over metal. Apparently, paint chip protection is their primary duty, since they don't do much for the car's looks. Under the deeply sloping hood line is either a 1.5-liter 12-valve four-cylinder or our standard 1.3-liter unit. Even with the standard engine, things are crowded in here. Plugs, while front-facing, will be more difficult for owner servicing than they should be. And you can forget about do-it-yourself belt changes unless you're unemployed and have lots of time on your hands. More unusual for a front-wheel drive car is Honda's use of torsion bars rather than coil springs for the front strut suspension. It's a very compact setup, but if anyone remembers how old torsion barred Chryslers drove, you won't be surprised that we felt every pimple in the road. And on the open road is where we diverge from those that call the CRX a modern sports car. Through our slalom course, it was more like being in a go-kart. Heavy drivers so compressed the front suspension that as it hit its stops, you literally bumped around a curve while the CRX 1.5 includes a rear stabilizer bar, we doubt that it will cure this problem. However, the unassisted rack and pinion steering is excellent. It allows you to zip around unexpected obstacles. Unfortunately, you feel so heroic in this tiny mobile that you might be inclined to take chances you shouldn't. We also found fault in the CRX's non-boosted front disc rear drum braking system. While stops from 55 miles per hour were very short at 114 feet, the rear wheels would lock up instantly in a panic situation. Fade was moderate, although pedal pressure remained good throughout the test. 
The CRX did have a pronounced tendency to spin and swerve, but at least it was always driver controllable. However, we have no complaints about acceleration. For its size, the CRX is plenty fast enough, with a 0 to 60 time of 11.2 seconds. The larger engine would reduce that by a full second. Our passing time of 5 seconds from 40 to 55 was also most reasonable, especially for a high mileage car, with far more mid-range torque than expected. But if you have to give a medal to the CRX, try a gold in parking lot maneuverability. Turning diameter is a scant 29 feet. And finally, we come to the CRX's incredibly high fuel economy. Ratings by the Environmental Protection Agency are 51 in the city cycle and 67 on the highway. It may then sound ludicrous if we wonder why 54 miles per gallon is all we managed on our economy loop. So we come to the end of this road test with a mixed view of the Honda CRX. We think tiny, high mileage cars like the CRX are just what city dwellers or short distance commuters need. In our opinion, it does not handle or break anything like an up-to-date sports car. Plus, its small size makes it questionable for inexperienced or overconfident drivers. But you have to take it for what it is, a mini but spacious, highly fuel-efficient, fairly versatile runabout. And in that light, the CRX is indeed yet another laudable achievement from Honda.